Welcome back. So last week we mostly just explored food loathering and got through the first set of quests we picked up, and now we're going to continue the exploration of loathering. Another turn in quests we've completed and see what else there is to do. There will, I do not doubt, be a few other things to do. Oh, I didn't actually have to stop it. Dwarves. Hello. Any luck with that poison? Or you're here to see my stock? I have what you asked for. Splendid! If those beasties come on my land, I hope it teaches them a lesson. Yeah, enough gold to cover any of your expenses and then some. Hey! <laughs> Isn't even really any dark spawn down south. It's all Grey Warden work. They're a devious lot, that's for sure. Interesting. And a refugee. They say your mother is Flemeth, a witch of the Kakari Rods. They also say that washing your feet in winter makes you catch cold in the head, but we all know that is not true. But sometimes they are right. And they are right in this. You know the stories about... Of course. You think my mother would let me go without telling me all the stories of her youth? My mother told me stories too. She was the one who kindled my love of the old tales and legends. Hmm. My mother's stories curdled my blood and haunted my dreams. No little girl wants to hear about the wilder men her mother took to her bed, using them till they were spent, then killing them. No little girl wants to be told that this is also expected of her once she comes of age. I... um... I see. No, you don't. You really don't. Um... Yeah, that sounds... Let's put it healthy. It sounds healthy. Very... Definitely, definitely healthy there. The path of righteousness is full of hardship, but the Maker smiles upon its travelers. Thank you. Hashtag. If I fed the farmer and his toward son, I swear this missive as the Maker is my witness. I charge all those with knowledge of arms and armor to brave the dangers of the northern woods and find the family of bears that mauled and killed the boy Enoch, for they are an abomination in the Maker's sight, and their hides would prove great comfort the northern farms and solace for Thed's family. As the chanter of Lothering, I do pledge a sum of one sovereign to whoever carries a, of this. The Maker's will you know, exercise caution first and foremost, may his light pay this all. Alright. Thanks to all the villagers who opened their barns and crofts to the refugees in these dark times, the Chantry regularly hears praise of our visitors, from our visitors, and your righteous deeds are mentioned in many prayers. Sadly, there's a lone boy in the village whose mother, good wife Sarah, is missing as she has been missing for the better of a week. As of this writing, she's presumed dead. May the maker bless her passing. She's a lady of middle years, with red hair, and fond of green cloak. May travelers, a resident, Cross her in the wilds, please return her body or the effects on her remains. In later years, the boy will be thankful to have such keepsakes to remember his brave mother by. The officer of the chanter will compensate with this kindness of the sum of fifty silvers. May they make her turn his gaze on us. Alright. Now let's see about getting this Kunari released.
Patrick Rich. I believe you are one of the people from the Black Star Yes? Hi. What can I do for you? I have a letter for you from the Blackstone Regulars. I knew this time would come. I should have listened to my sister. Sure, sign the paper, she said. You'll enjoy some coin now, but they'll be back. I guess I'll see you on the front lines. That was easy. Hi. Huh. Good day, Sister Liliana. I'm surprised to see you're still in Lothering. It is good to see you as well, Your Reverence. Is there something I can do for you, then? Funny, Liliana also doesn't seem to know her name. I want to talk about Sten. Can I bury you in prison? It might have been kinder to execute him, but I leave his fate to the Maker. Why does he interest you? Is there a way I can convince you to release him? Then his next victims might count you and me as their murderers. I was thinking you might release him into my custody. And what do you say on this, Leliana? You know your friend better than I. These are unusual times, Your Reverence. With us, the Kunari might do some good. I am sure of it, in fact. Were things not so desperate? Very well, I trust you. Take these keys to his cage and make her watch over you. Thank you, Your Reverence. Your trust is not misplaced. Uh, the Reverend Mother has known me longer than Luana has. That seems kind of funny. Yes, there's a reason why I'm not leveling up yet. Why do you always go on about how stupid I am? I'm not stupid, am I? If you need to ask the question... Because it hurts my manly feelings, you know. Or one of them. Then I'll be sure to write you an apology once all of this is over. I was educated by the Chantry. I studied history. They don't make stupid Templars. Then I must have been mistaken. I'm very impressed. No, you're not. You're not even listening to me. My... You are smarter than you look after all. Your Chantry must have been very proud. As I said before, Salt Queen. Of course. And so it is done. I will follow you into battle. In doing so, I shall find my atonement. What if I don't leave you, lead you to your atonement? Then I will find it myself. May we proceed. I am eager to be elsewhere. Okay. Oh, blast it. Sorry, I, I kind of need to yes. stand. As you say. I never liked this part. Another part. Here comes Strabo. Oh, this is.
Take the links. You know, I'll just hear it. She wasn't. Under this impact, I would probably take her back to the village. Anyway, let's find the bears. The bears. Bears? How about you do cannon shot instead? As yes. you say. I feel, realistically, I might leave Sten, you know, outside the village, to spare their feelings. But, and also, realistically, I probably wouldn't have to choose just three companions to have. You know, the dog and Alistair can be with us the entire time. Anyway. Let him take notice and shine upon thee, for thou hast done his work this day. And the stars stood still, the winds did quiet, and all animals of earth and air held their breath. All was silent in prayer and thanks. Okay, yes. well. No, nothing else. All right. do is go up talk to the Reverend Mother with Sten in tow, because I think this will be amusing. You have anything to say? The Canari, out of its cage. Indeed. I would question this, but I have far more pressing matters to deal with. Misstep, creature, and it will be your last. A Canari does not misstep. <laughs> It figures that you would be behind this. I should go. Travel safely, and may the Maker watch over you. Why can't I tell him that, you know, I have Sten with me so he can be redeemed? And what do you have to say? You dare to bring that Canari here? Get him out! Out! I sense I am unwanted. Your powers of deduction are considerable. I apologize, we will go. Thank you. We have enough troubles without having to face that creature again. You know, I think it is possible to actually open that cage without getting the key. If you have like sufficient unlocking ability, which I think I do, so I could have actually just released him. So, perhaps not bother getting the key and instead just, uh, you know, 
unlock it, then bring him in, because that would be amusing. Alright, so let's... I'm going to do some merchanting. Hmm. Don't suppose you're looking to buy something. Alright. Just don't buy everything up. Done. Why are you here? Excuse me? Obviously you are no priestess, but shouldn't you be running a shop or a farm somewhere rather than fighting? You think to tell me my place, Kunari? You are very brave. It is not done. But it is done. Do not be such a blind fool. I speak the truth. It is not I who is blind. Look around you, then. You see women throughout this land, fighters and mages both. That has yet to be proven. Which? That they fight? Or that they are female? Either. So I am not truly a woman to you, hmm? It is good to know. I believe I've previously played through Head to make that comment when, I guess, Morgan was there. I was there, and main character was also female, so it's like, um, hmm, yes. Yes, Dan, you are right to question <laughs> that women fight. Okay. Nope, nothing left to do. Load the room. I guess that... Okay. And now we head out of Lothering, such as it is. Blood mage. Interesting. Mighty timely arrival there, my friend. I'm much obliged. You're welcome. The name's Bodon Fedic, merchant and entrepreneur. This here is my son, Sandal. Say hello, my boy. Hello. Road's been mighty dangerous these days. Mind if I ask what brings you out here? Perhaps we're going the same way. I doubt you want to travel with Grey Warden. Grey Wardens? Hmm. My, that does rather explain a lot. Though I faint, but I suspect there's more excitement on your path than my boy and I can handle. Allow me to bid you farewell and good fortune, Dunk. Goodbye. Now then, let's get this mess cleaned up, shall we? As you say. It will be done. Okay. All right, let's see on the off chance. Does...
Bad dreams, huh? Sleeping in your armor doesn't seem like it'd be terribly comfortable. It seems so real. Well, it is real, sort of. You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. Hmm. And just like real pets, it talks when you're in the middle of things. This kind of a question is to... So I understand dreaming, at least in this world, it's kind of just sort of thing that nervous systems do. It might involve processing memories, figuring out what to keep and what to dispose of. But in this, it's really could do the same thing. The difference being is that dwarves don't enter the fade when they dream. So I'm not entirely certain. I was like they would interact with the Grey Warden thing, but the Archdemon, is that the dragon? I don't know if it's really a dragon, but it sure looks like one. But yes, that's the Archdemon. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow. When I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. Any other surprises I should know about? Other than dying young and the whole defeat the blight alone thing? No. I'm all tapped out for surprises. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. And here's party camp. You. You're a hard man to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy. Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins? Levy the trader? Very convenient that everyone can find me this easily. I'm Duran. I've never heard of you. Really? He never told you of old Levy? We've known each other for years. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is, at that. But I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. Kind of surprising that the... Uh... News has spread this quickly of Duncan's death. I mean... Yeah, could be easily assumed that, you know, news of the battle and how it went it spread relatively quickly, but... I 
Actually, it was kind of surprising that, um, Duncan would have told Levy of me. Given as I... Theory Duncan met me for the first time when he went down you know, to Orzammar. And where in that intervening time would he have had time to tell this guy about me? Anyway. How did you know Duncan? It's a bit of a tale, that is. But I'm the one who brought the Grey Wardens back to Ferelden. Well, I was one of the ones. There were a lot of us. Make us breath. I'm a bit nervous. Honored to be here, really. Go ahead and tell your tale. After King Marek freed us from the Orlesians, the Grey Wardens begged the King's permission to come into Ferelden, some sort of internal business. Me and a mess of other Warden sympathizers spoke on behalf of your order. Tan Logain was very much against letting Orlesian Wardens in the kingdom, but Marek, Andraste, bless him, was a fair-minded monarch, and he let them in. I feel like that could have been easily avoided by getting Grey Wardens from another place, like... I don't know... The Anderfells? The base of the... Wardens? I mean, there's also the Free Marches, which have Wardens, and... That's yeah, I mean, across the sea, it's the waking sea, but yeah. Go on, I'm listening. So that's why I was there when the Wardens and their leader, Genevieve, presented herself to the King. The first Wardens in Ferelden in over a century. Proudest state of my life, that was. Duncan was a bit of a scamp back then. We were of an age and struck up a friendship. The King himself went with the Wardens on their mysterious business. When he returned, he rescinded King Ardlan's decree, and the Wardens came back to Ferelden for good. Why were the Grey Wardens cast out by Ireland? People say it's because the Wardens have become terribly unpopular. Just soaking up ties and not doing a bleeding thing for the kingdom. I say that's bollocks, as recent events have shown. Marek rescinded the decree just like that? Marek was a bit of a visionary. A powerful mind, that one. In his travels with the Wardens, he must have seen how important their cause was, and been moved by it. I doubt that's the full story. Ferelden was ravaged by war, and your dwarven cousins, well, they had a proper appreciation of Wardens. But make no mistake, King Marek was a giant among men. Duncan was an easy man to like. Seemed more emotionless. But anyway. That he was. I thank you for your part in bringing the wardens here. Oh, his stomach's all a flutter. You're welcome. What promise did Duncan make to you? My family, well, passed a bit checkered to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last Warden Commander of Ferelden back when the Wardens were known as Freeloaders. So King Olin banished the Wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. What happened next? Hard to say. After King Olin died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. Hmm. I'm surprised you kept your name. Our family's only crime was guarding the kingdom against the blight. We're not ashamed of that. So what favor did you ask of Duncan? I asked for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, 
but it'll restore our honor. I've never even heard of Soldier's Peak, which is probably true. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honor. How will reclaiming the peak help the wardens? Soldiers' peak a strategic and symbolic importance. Duncan said that it would be worth it right there. He also hoped to recover lost warden history and perhaps a few old relics. No one knows what's up there now. Why didn't Duncan help you? Darkspawn surfaced in southern Ferelden, and Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. Duncan said he would help after the Battle of Ostagar. Said there might be useful things at the peak, but he never had the chance. What do you need from me? I can pick my way through the tunnels at the base of Soldier's Peak, but the place, well, they say it's haunted, and it'll be dangerous for certain. Will you think on it at least? Let's go to Soldier's Peak. A thousand blessings upon you, Warden. I'll mark down the location on your map. When you arrive, we'll pick our way through the tunnels together. Okay, cool. Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Feddy, at your service once again. I saw your camp and thought to myself, what safer place to rest for the evening than in the camp of a Grey Warden? I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? Well... In a Grey Warden camp, yes, does sound fairly safe as compared to, like, you know, just being out on your own, but there's also brings other dangers, like the fact that we specifically seek out to fight Darkspawn, and the fact that we've been declared renegades, outlaws, by the presumed regent of the land. Anyway. What are you selling, exactly? Anything, everything, but all of the finest quality. No cheap trinkets here. And my boy Sandal happens to be a bit of a hand with enchantments. Oh, yes. Sadly, it also makes us a target for bandits and the like. If there were spare hands to hire as guards, I would have done so long ago. You're free to stay, just mind your sentence. Wonderful. Thank the gentleman, won't you, boy? Thank you, sir. We won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. You should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy. Otherwise, come speak with me. Cool. Hi, Sandal. Hello. The boy's a bit simple, but he's rather good with enchantments. One of those tranquil fellas actually called him a... What was it now? A savant. I had no idea such a thing existed. What enchantments does he do? He can fold lyrium into almost any weapon or piece of armor, though naturally some of the more extravagant materials will take more lyrium than others. It's a process that some of the master smiths back in Orzammar will perform, but my boy here is just as adept at it. Isn't that right, boy? Enchantment! And there you have it. Hmm. Want some enchanting done. Enchantment! I'm into the fire, but I'm pretty certain I'd be uncomfortable here. I'm standing on the dinner! Which appears to be a single beat? That's okay. Got a wheel of cheese. Cheese, um, apple. 
full of hunks of meat. Alistair, let's talk. What do you need? You want to talk about Duncan? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. That doesn't mean I don't mourn his loss. I... I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning that this can happen. Any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost him, not when so much is riding on us, not with the blight and... and everything. I'm sorry. No harm done, Alistair. I'd like to have a proper funeral for him. Maybe once this is all done, if we're still alive. I don't think he had any family to speak of. He had you? I suppose he did. It probably sounds stupid, but part of me wishes I was with him. In the battle. I feel like I abandoned him. I believe how little emotion he showed. I'm not sure he actually cared much about anyone in particular. He saved your life by sending you to the tower. Yes. I know. I think he came from High Ever. Or so he said. Maybe I'll go up there sometime. See about putting up something in his honor. I don't know. Dwarves don't practice cremation, do they? How do your people honor your dead? We entomb our dead within the stone beneath our tags. I think in that case you'd have a problem with not having enough space. Though, that's also a problem in, you know, normal cemeteries. I heard about that, now that I think about it. Their spirits return to the rock, strengthening the foundation of the tag. It sounds so strange. Maybe so. Duncan is one of your people, however, not ours. I suppose you're right. Thank you. Really, I mean it. It was good to talk about it, at least a little. Maybe I'll go to High Ever with you whenever you go. I'd like that. So would he. Alright, anything else? What do you need? Ask away. What can a Templar do, exactly? Essentially, they're trained to fight. Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. So Templars use magic themselves? You could call it that, sure. The Chantry doesn't look on it the same way, however, since really our talents only work on mages. Against a regular person, I'm just a guy in a metal suit. Have you hunted many mages? No, I never actually became a full Templar. Duncan recruited me before I took my vows. I was only present during one harrowing, the ritual that they test the mages with. It's not unlike our joining, really. Um, just as deadly. The girl they tested, she had a demon put inside her to see if she could resist, and she couldn't. We had to end it quickly. I have to say I didn't have much interest in becoming a Templar after that. So instead you joined an order which will kill anyone was conscripted and attempts to refuse who's to join. Also, that doesn't really match the description. 
I understand of the harrowing. I mean, yeah, there's temptation by demons, but my impression was that it's... You're not actually... Putting a demon in someone makes them possessed, makes them an abomination. And that process is largely irreversible. So I... Yeah, that's not... I feel like they probably changed the lore a little bit since this came out. So couldn't others learn these talents? Perhaps. But there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given Lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the Lyrium trade with the Dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. So you're addicted to this Lyrium? Thankfully, no. You only start receiving Lyrium once you've taken your vows. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. What do you need? Ask away. Tell me we've got three wounds. Such as they are. Where are the nearest Grey Wardens from here? That's a good question. There's plenty in Orlais, but who knows where they might be found. And the nearest Orlesian city is weeks away. If we go north and cross the sea, there's bound to be some in the Free Marches. Again, however, I just don't know where. I don't know anything about Grey Wardens in other lands. Is there a headquarters somewhere? Here in Ferelden, there's our compound in Denerim at the palace, but that's it. Loghain will have control over that and be watching it, no doubt. Beyond that, the only place I know of is Weishaupt Fortress. That's the headquarters of all Great Wardens in the Anderfels, a thousand miles from here. But I've no idea how to even contact them. So unless we try to get back to the compound in Denerim, I suppose the answer is no. There's nowhere for us to go. So what happens now that there's just two of us? I imagine that eventually the Grey Wardens outside of Ferelden will wonder what's happened. Why there's no contact from Duncan or someone. They'll send someone eventually. Though who knows what Loghain's people in Denerim will tell them. Maybe they won't send anyone. We could try to contact them. But that would mean leaving Ferelden. And even if we did, they couldn't come back with us in time to stop the blight. So that means whatever happens, it's up to us. I feel like they'd have some sort of plan for this, because it's... You're dedicated to fighting... Thank you, Jory. A horde or that it will kill everyone. It'd be entirely possible that you could lose all your wardens in basically one battle. Will we need to start rebuilding the Order? I mean, eventually we would have to use the joining to make more Grey Wardens, right? But I don't know how to do the joining, or what's involved. I know it involves Lyrium and some other magic, and that it's really difficult to prepare, but that's it. Unless we can find out more about the joining, I guess we'd better get used to the idea that there might only be two of us for now. Until more come from elsewhere. Was lyrium too. That's interesting. What would happen if we just left? Just left? You mean just left Ferelden? I don't know. If there's an arch demon, however, we're supposed to be the only ones who can defeat it, and that means the blight would grow unchecked. Eventually, other Grey Wardens in Orlais and other lands would hear about it, and they would come to fight it, but they wouldn't come in time to save Ferelden. There's no way. I'm not going anywhere. No more questions. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. What do you need? Fantastic. Ask away. So can you teach others to be Templar? I suppose I could. But I really would rather not. When the Grand Cleric let Duncan recruit me, 
She made me swear never to reveal Templar secrets outside of the Chantry. I'd rather not go back on my word. Very well, I respect your word. Ask me later, perhaps. Maybe I'll change my mind. This is not something small you're asking, after all. What do you need? Ask away. Did sorry. I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. That would explain the smell. Well, it wasn't until I was eight that I discovered you didn't have to lick yourself clean. Old habits die hard, you know. That would explain the breath as well, then. And my table manners, too. Though, come to think of it, they weren't all that different from the other Templars. Or did I dream all of that? <laughs> Funny the dreams you'll have when you sleep on a cold, hard ground, isn't it? I dream of becoming a Grey Warden. Oh, wait. Hmm. Point taken. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Our Lehman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was older. Why did he send you off to the Chantry? Our Lehman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Isle didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten, just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. You're probably luckier than most orphans. I suppose you're right. I wasn't raised as the Arl's son, though, if you're picturing that. I slept in hay, out in the stables, not on silk sheets. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there, and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. Are you sure he isn't your father? Yes, I'm quite sure. At any rate, I don't look anything like him. You'll see for yourself. Not that it stopped the rumors any. All I know is that the Arl is a good man and well-loved by the people. He also was King Caelan's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Logain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. What do you need? Ask away. So how do you become Grey Warden? Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it, and pass out. You haven't forgotten already, have you? I mean before that. Let's see. I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar, in fact. That's where I learned most of my skills. You don't seem the religious sort. You're telling me I was banished to the kitchens to scour the pots more times than I can count. And that's a lot. I, I can count pretty high. The Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually, and was she ever furious when he did? I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. You think this is better than being a Templar? Why did the Grand Cleric want to keep you? I wondered that myself. It's not as if she valued me highly. I think she just didn't want to give anything to the Grey Wardens, is all. The Chantry didn't lose much. 
And I think I can do more fighting the Blight anyhow, rather than sitting in a temple somewhere. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, you know, I would never... I wouldn't have. He was a good man. He was. A good man who didn't deserve his fate. That much, I'm sure of. Come on, let's go. I think I'm done talking. I'm not done talking to you. What do you need? Ask away. Why have you made a Templar if you hate the Chantry? Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for the Templar. Oh, I don't think I've seen you wearing it. I keep it hidden under my pillow. Sometimes I'll take it out just so I can hug it fondly and remember the good old days. <laughs> Brings a tear to the eyes, you know. Do all the Templars make these jokes, or just you? Oh, you know, between all the guilt and the hours spent in solemn prayer, any good Templar or priest is just bursting to tell a few good jokes when the opportunity arises. You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. I do really want to know, yes. Poke, poke, poke. Tell me everything about your life, Alistair. All right, if you insist, it's not like we have anything better to do, right? The truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Arl Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. What did you enjoy about the training? The education, mostly, but also the discipline. You need to have a disciplined mind in order to use the abilities we have. It was difficult, but rewarding. I never really felt at home anywhere, though, until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful for when we encountered Darkspawn magic, so I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? Not anymore, no. We won't always be traveling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, a time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose the Grey Wardens are gone for good, either way. No, they really aren't. I mean, they were out of the country for how long, and they got invited back? They can be rebuilt. I suppose you're right. We can create new Grey Wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. Okay. I'm going to call that for the week, and yeah. Oh, Chari. Anyway, yeah, that's going to be where I call it for the week. Hey, thanks for watching, and I should be back in another week with more content.